Good morning. Good, morning. Uh, good to see everyone here. It's a little brisk this morning, isn't it? Uh, I guess it, I guess I guess the Lord did put that on my heart. I've got that down too. Uh, uh, other, other announcements I got here, uh, Lent services uh, will continue on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. in the evening, and uh, this Lent service will be uh, talking about the song, Abide With Me. So, um, and other, of course, I've got five other songs you can hear for this week on YouTube. So, and again, whether you have a YouTube account or not, and I'm not YouTube, excuse me. At some social media, social media service, I'm using Facebook this time, and, and this one's more geared for a sharing and, and commenting and, and engaging in conversation. YouTube does that a little bit, but um, Facebook does that better. So, uh, any other announcements before I get going? All right. Uh, today's the first uh, Sunday of Lent, so that means... Uh, it's a time of repentance as we go forward through the journey uh, to the cross with, with Jesus. Um, also, because it's a time of repentance, uh, there's no hymn of praise in our order of worship. And even though the Alleluia is printed, um, I do not have an Alleluia for today because it's not supposed to be that during Lent. I'm, I'm still <laughs> I'm a creature of habit, I guess. <laughs> so... Um, but with that, we will we do have a good a good song um, that's rather uplifting uh, for our opening hymn, uh, God of Grace, God of Glory. So let's go ahead and please stand as we sing hymn number eight fifty.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cast your burdens on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide from my prayer for mercy. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sins I know and I'm ashamed, but some are known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Our Heavenly Father is merciful. He has forgiven you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord let us sing. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church, that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading today comes from Genesis chapter 22, beginning at verse 1. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Mori. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains. I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offerings, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, 
God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and there arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son and your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through, you, through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson for today comes from James chapter 1, beginning at verse 12. Blessed is the man who preserves under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. At once, the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Let us confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing hymn number 655. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. How do you all do under trials? How do you do under difficult times? Now, it could depend on the trial. If it's just a really busy day, and tomorrow should be better, well then, it's just a matter of getting through it. You know there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but if you lost your job, and your best friend died, and the dog died, then that would be a tough day. Whether it has been tough for much of the United States, do the people there have enough resources to get through this storm? In any difficult time, it doesn't help if you have someone following you, purposely giving you a hard time. In our gospel reading, we have the Spirit leading Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days. We don't hear of the food fast in this gospel like we do in the others. But we do know that Jesus was going through a tough time. For he says he was being tempted by Satan. Satan, of course, is the bad guy. He's been the bad guy since the beginning of creation. He led Adam and Eve to fall into sin, and he's the one that encouraged mankind to live in sin. How did that scene go? Do you remember? 
in that scene, Jesus is the serpent. And in Genesis chapter 3, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You notice here that the devil just twisted God's words. The devil deceived Eve. He reasoned away God's command to turn his no into a sinful yes. Then Eve ate the forbidden fruit. Did Satan, the devil, make her do it? No. Eve chose the fruit. Then a bit later, God comes into the scene. God asked Adam, Have you eaten of the, free, uh, of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate it. Yeah, so, so what did Adam do here? He not only ate the fruit, he blamed it on, on God. But it was indeed Adam who chose the fruit. What does our epistle lesson have to add to this? James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. Verse 14, but each person tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. So what this is saying here is that there was something else going on in that garden. Something Adam gave into his wife because he had the desire to be with his wife rather than being alone. If Eve ate it, then I'm going to eat it too. The peer pressure method never seems to fail, does it? The trials of peer pressure. And today we might even have the question, are you going to wear a mask into the store? I'm not going to wear one if you aren't. But these aren't the questions that ought to be asked. The question is, what is the rules of the store? Now I'm done with that illustration. Moving on with James 1.15. Then the desire, when it has conceived gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. This desire, of course, is a sinful desire. And this is the fate of what essentially happened to Adam and Eve, isn't it? We all live in sin today because of the actions of Adam and Eve. God said to Adam and Eve, Cursed is the ground because of you, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Adam and Eve would no longer live eternally on this earth. 
death would come to them and all their children. They needed a savior. And God said he would send one. James chapter 1, verses 16 through 17. Do not be deceived, my brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe that God doesn't do evil and that everything comes from him is good? What about trials? Even the one found in our Old Testament lesson. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son. The one he waited for for almost a century. I think this is one trial that many of us would have a hard time following through. I know that there are people who would bargain with the Lord. Lord, I'll do this if, if you give me that. But this is different. This is God telling you to give up your son. At the end of the story, we find that this was just a test. That God intervened and offered a substitute for the sacrifice. And what God was testing was Abraham's faith. Was God tempting Abraham to sin? What does our epistle lesson have to say? In James verse 13, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, for he himself tempts no one. But then we might ask, but what about the Lord's Prayer? We pray every Sunday, Lord, lead us not into temptation. And these are the very words from Jesus himself. Now here we do recognize that God could allow the devil to tempt us. Just as Jesus was led into temptation by the Spirit. As it is in our gospel lesson. But we pray that our Father would guard and keep us from the evil one. God has his angels working to protect his people and lead them to Jesus. But Satan has his angels working to lead all people into sin. And what good does sin do for us? It leads us into false belief, despair, shame, death, and even more sin. Last year for Lent, we talked about how to recognize Satan's attacks. And people often fall into Satan's trap when they are the weakest. They began to think that sin will bring them out of their weakness. James 1.14 Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. His own sinful desire. What does James also say? Back in verse 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. I 
I bet you guys don't do well under trials. For I know I myself don't. I try to not have any habits that will lead me to fail or to get myself into situations that will also lead me to fail. But we need someone greater, don't we? We need someone who has never fallen into sin from Satan's temptation to get us out of trouble. In the Gospel of Mark, we know Jesus is victorious over Satan. For Jesus continued in his ministry. Jesus goes into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of the Lord and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled. Jesus has been able to withstand mankind's greatest enemy. He is the man who who remained steadfast under trial. So if Jesus can overcome the greatest demon of them all, what does this mean for the rest of the demons? Jesus is telling his audience that the kingdom of God is at hand. And repent of your sins. Believe that Jesus is the promised hope that the sinners have been waiting for. Jesus is victorious over Satan when he went into the wilderness. And he had victory when he died as an innocent man on the cross. And Jesus rose from the ground three days later. And Jesus defeated the greatest punishment of sin, which is death. While you and I have fallen into sin one way or another, Jesus has not fallen into Satan's temptation for us. So if we ever face any kind of difficult time, we ought to actually, as James says, rejoice. For our hope is in Jesus Christ, who overcame the difficult times in this wilderness experience. So because Jesus is victorious over Satan for us, let us avoid of living in any kind of deceit. Rather, let us continue to seek God and his word and what he says with the help of the Holy Spirit. And let us do good works to withstand the devil's lies. And when any trials come, let us rejoice. Rejoice in the time for we know that Jesus is stronger than the devil and that, and through it, Our faith in Jesus Christ shall be strengthened. In his name alone. Amen. May the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we now collect our offering.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we enter this season of Lent of repentance and renewed devotion, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love in Christ and instruct and lead us by your Spirit so that we may repent and believe in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you place the wood of the cross on the back of your only begotten son, that as the promised offspring of Abraham, he might possess the gates of hell. Bless, we pray, his church and all those called to preach and teach within her with the certainty that those gates cannot prevail against them, that in faith they may boldly trample the very power of the enemy. Lord, in your mercy. Father of lights, from whom every good and perfect gift comes down to us from above. Keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts in sin, and help us to use them rightfully in service to you and our neighbor. Bless all our leaders that they may be governed wisely and justly for the good of this present generation and all those to come. Lord, in your mercy. Most high God, our refuge in every trouble, you have promised to hear us when we call you. We especially pray for those who are in Texas who are struggling with a lack of resources. We pray that you care for them and all other people who are in need. We pray that for those who are in need, wherever they are, that you strengthen them, that they are able to serve by their own needs. And we pray that you would heal those who are sick or have some sort of illness. We pray especially for those we will now name silently in our hearts. Lord, heal them and also heal all people of COVID so that we can continue to gather freely among our people. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you bless the earth to make it fruitful. Bring forth in abundance whatever is needed for good health. Prosper the work of the farmers and all those who are in labor to bring food to our table. Grant them seasonable weather that they may gather the gifts of fruit of the earth in abundance and proclaim your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now continue with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, 
that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may you leave with this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.